theme, which the theologians call proto-evangelism, which means the beginning of evangelism, where God was making the first plan and attempt to save man. So he told the serpent and the Satan in Genesis 3.15, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So when Paul says that the preaching of the cross to the man who don't believe is foolishness, but unto us who are saved, it's salvation, it's eternal life. Thank God for the cross. Satan got it all around. He thought by deceiving our four parents, he would have had full domain over everyone for all the time. But thank God, Christ made an intervention through the cross. Satan could not understand him, trying all he could have to abolish the plan of God to redeem you and me this morning. But he could not have boycotted it. He could not have aborted, sorry, the plan of God to redeem you and me this morning. The summer to say, oh God, look where you brought me from. It's because of the atoning death of Christ on the cross. I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore. Thank God Jesus came and lifted me out of the marriage. Amen, amen. And today I can say, look where you brought me from. Amen. My life was messed up, thank God. We were wrapped up in sin. Amen. But the cross of Christ made a difference in my life today. Amen, amen. Thank God for the cross. Yes. So the plan of the cross reveals the love of God, the mercy of God, and the grace of God at its best. Mm. And man's sin at its worst. All the sins, the punishment for all the sins of all of us who are poor on the sinless soul of Jesus. And the songwriter captures it and says that my sins were higher than the mountain when the Lord sanctified me. Oh, what a testimony for the church. Amen. I'll tell some dirty things in private and secret. But Jesus spoke me. Yes. The Holy Spirit spoke to me, convicted yes. me, and yes. drew me to Christ. Thank yes. God it all became possible through the cross of Christ. Amen. In Romans 5, Paul capsules the message of the cross and says what God commanded his love towards us is that while we were yet sinners, tell me, Christ, thank you for us, the cross. Thank God for the cross. So Gordon Brown of all the Inbred Ministries writes, when the world's sin were heaped, heaped on the sinless soul, of Jesus, it was a heart and hand of his loving Father redeeming lost mankind. Thank God. The redemptive plan of the cross is God's only and final divine provision for the saving of lost mankind. The dispensation of innocence and guilt the human government. Yes. All of those who work. Contents. Yes. The law. Picture of government. All those 
that God loves you with an everlasting love. Amen. And God's hands of mercy are outstretched to you daily. Amen. And say, Come home, my son. Amen. Come home. Amen. I love you and have a great plan for your life. Oh, amen. True. So I want to someone to hear this morning. You would just like to wave to me. All in this song and say, Yes, I have been contemplating serving Jesus. I'm had enough of the world. I'm going to need the cross of Jesus this morning and commit my whole life to him. Anyone like that? Just slip it up quickly as we see that Any more hand in the night? Lord, I will commit. I came to church this morning for the express purpose to give my life to Jesus. Any other person like that? Hallelujah. I see another hand in the back. We are coming to that point. Just hold on to the decision. Yes. It's the divine provision. And it's the last one. Thank God you don't need any more sheep or goats or heavens or turtle doves. The shedding of blood, the shedding of Jesus' blood on the cross, made a final, final dispensation of grace. Friends, now is the time, now is the best opportunity to cash in on God's last attempt to reach man, to save man. So Paul picks it up beautifully again and encapsulates it beautifully in Acts 4 verse 12 saying there neither is there salvation in any other for there is none in the name of the heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. No man no religion. Is that because you the testament you are saved? Our Pentecost and of us in holiness our scripture baptist our second Adventists. Is that believing you just because you just believe there's a God? But the devil does. You see, before man could be saved, he must accept the irrevocable, I don't want to say fact, the irrevocable truth of the Bible that Jesus truth. is the only person who can save in this morning. Hallelujah. It has nothing to do with preaching in it. it has nothing to do with church attendance. When it comes to starting a relationship with Christ, it begins with repentance. Yes, amen. Turning from sin and turning to God. Yes. I can preach as much as my little and my short hair. Oh yes, I can talk about God is good. I can read my Bible. I can try to be a nice person. Okay, if you want to repent and turn from sin. That has never saved anybody. No. And it will never save anyone either. Never. Neither is there salvation in any other. It's through Jesus Christ. Because Jesus paid the ultimate price on the cross to save every last sinner who will repent of the Amen. Sins. Amen. That's right. So the preaching of the cross is a message of hope for the hopeless yes. and help for the helpless. Yes. The cross bridges the gulf, the gap, the great divide between a holy God and sinful man. So Paul says in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. If you must come to Christ, you can, and if you must get to God, you must come to Christ. And it begins with repentance. Paul again writes in Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4, which I call, it is the fulfillment of the plan of the cross. It is the execution of God's plan to ransom and to save man. But when the fullness of time, when the most opportune time arrived and came, the fullness of time, God is never too early and God is never too late. He is always just at 
in 1 Peter 2 24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we are healed. Christ came to make the difference, not just a difference, but the difference in the lives of anyone who is accepting what he said. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 1 23, but we preach Christ crucified. Thank God that a real person, not spirit, came from the cross, died on the cross. When Jesus oozed out easily out of those cloths that they wrapped him, it was not the angel who took him, raised him from the dead. No son. They testified that Jesus Christ came from the dead himself. He was not half dead to be resuscitated. Jesus Christ really died and he rose physically from the grave and that's the common message of the cross that today we are serving a living Christ and he wants to live within your heart to walk with you, to talk with you and to bless you and to guide your life he died that you and I, you and me should live Thank God for the cross. That's the plan of the cross. The passion of the cross. The last thing, the power of the cross. There are other men who died for many things. From the strength. The ISIS people, the terrorist people, they say they're dying because believers in the world listen while they're in the morning. And they don't care giving the light because they will be getting several miles. I don't know where. For sure, if that is the truth, it has to be in hell. And who would want to be a terrorist wife in hell? But the cross of Jesus has power. Supernatural, life-changing, dynamic power is in the cross. And as I stand here, I must say, thank God for the cross. The power of the cross. What the power of the cross did and what it does right at this moment. The power of the cross appeased and appeases and settles and still settles the dispute. The cross appeases and settles the dispute, the rift, and the fallout between God and us and brought peace again. Peace! Jesus said, my peace I give to you. It has nothing to do with the peace that the world has. The world has peace today but not tomorrow. But the peace that Jesus brings and gives, resonates, buries, deposited in your soul. A child of God works with God's peace. He carries it wherever he goes. Thus making him a peacemaker. This peace gives off joy. Oh, this morning, if you're angry with yourself, you're angry with your parents, you're angry with the police, what we can do now? You're angry with your neighbor, and you're 
and receive your forgiveness. Thank God for the cross. The cross, the cross, the cross, the power of the cross gives us eternal life. The cross gives us hope. The cross of Jesus gives us victory over death and hell and the grave. Thank God for the cross. On the cross, on the cross I say, God made a divine exchange. His son, Christ Jesus, took our sins and gave us his salvation. Let me say, let us say, thank God. Thank God for the cross. Thank you. The power of the cross reconciles us to God. We are no more strangers, aliens and enemies. We are now friends, children, daughters and sons of God. Thank you. You know what you are? Thank God for the cross. Amen. Thank God for the cross. Yes, the power of the cross. The power of the cross of Jesus has broken, broken the deadly cycle of sin. What is the deadly cycle of sin? The power of sin. Yes. The punishment for sin. And thank God there is a pardon for sin. That's the cycle. Sin has a bond of our lives and messed up with that God. But thank God for the cross. He has delivered me. Now I am free. Free at last from the cross. Thank God for the cross. Amen. Say that no more. Has dominion over my life. The sight of sin has been broken. I am now a child of God. The cross, the power of the cross, the power of the cross, and through the cross, we are healed through the cross. I said, we are cleansed through the cross. We have been forgiven. The cross of Jesus saves. The cross of Jesus justifies. The cross of Jesus sanctifies. The cross of Jesus gives us hope. And the cross of Jesus is a way over to glory. Standing with The way of the cross leads home to the sweet to know. As I am not known, the way of the cross. We told If you have that song, we have the cross of his own. But this happened on you. If not, let's go to Jesus keeping your cross. 390 redemption. Just before I tell you what you wish for you. This message is saying to us that God had a plan. And he didn't just talk and talk and talk about the plan. He put the plan in action. His son came to save and to seek the express mission of Jesus Christ on this earth was to preach the kingdom of God which embodies repentance, forgiveness. You're here this morning and you don't know the Lord. Those two persons who raised their hands earlier, I want you to come forward and listen. This is your moment. Says I want you to point at this time. Oh, the 
cross. Don't we need that cross? Jesus would be to Yeah. It doesn't matter what you have done in life. It doesn't matter. Come on, this is it. I will forgive you. Your sins go up in high. I am higher than a mountain. And I will forgive you. You may say, I've done so many bad things. I don't believe that I can change. You can't change yourself. Christ will change you. I want to get a young man this morning. I want to marry this a young woman, a boy or girl. One of our senior citizens. You don't know Jesus as a savior. Why don't you come and see? The sound that we are going to say, Jesus, keep me near the cross, is a longing of our hearts to those of us who are saved. You are saying, Oh God, help me, even as I take, partake of the Lord's table this morning. Keep me to the cross. Keep me reflecting on what you did for me on the cross. God, help me to serve you. Sing this song. Come, Jesus. We 
go on behalf of this your child who oh Lord stands before your presence and recommits himself to you he recommits to the ideal of the cross to the value to the power and oh God I pray at this time that your power will just enter up his mind arrest the spirit and take charge so that the life of your child our brother would Lord be cemented in you all of the dictates of the cross I pray that the, the rule of the cross will rest upon his life that he would be willing to abandon self to deny self interests to follow daily in a sacrificial way the path which the cross guides. Let this be like a seal and a stamp on his heart. So that from this moment, Lord, there will be freshness. There will be a sense of knowing and a, a joyful assurance that Christ died and that we are forgiven. We accept this glad hope. We accept the joyful news. We accept the word, the message of hope. May our lives be eternally Thank you for your blessings. Raise your hand with me, Father. Let us all. We lift our hands towards heaven. And as we heard the message of the cross, we realize while we have accepted it, it has brought some responsibility on our path. Lord, we have this obligation to walk after you. To live our lives in obedience to your will. For though you pay the price, if we disregard you, if we disrespect you, if we disobey you, we will reap rewards that are not pleasant. But your love and your joy and your promise is that our hearts will be blessed. That we will find favor and grace and honor before your presence. So, we come to you today and we give you all the praise through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You may have a seat. Always a good thing to do what you have done, my friend. To walk out before an audience and to, to draw near to God. And there are many, there are many of you who need to do that, you know. There are many who need to do that. There are many of us here who are carrying the weight of self. Many people are burdened down. And you need to lay it down. Put it down. And to take up the cross, the cross is liberating. Sounds like a disgrace. Take up the cross and follow Christ. But it's the only path to honor. Amen? And we are proud to be soldiers of the cross. Hallelujah. Thank you, Minister Denny, for sharing such.